More broadly than Dr. Fauci, though, I guess what I'm getting at is there was not so long ago a point where anyone asking the question of whether a lab leak was a credible theory that should be looked into, you know, a lot of those people were derided as, as fringe, you know, conspiracy theorists. So are there lessons learned, you know, looking back about how we discuss um, theories when we don't have all of the answers? So what, here's what I can tell you is the president's commitment to getting to the bottom of this, right? That is what's the most important. So the, Sorry, I wasn't sure. Um, just one more on the, the lab leak news from the Department of Energy. With all of this information coming out, and obviously the president had ordered a multi-agency effort um, that included the Department of Energy to try to you know, get at the origins question. But looking, you know, with hindsight 2020, and now these conclusions coming out from parts of this administration, was it prudent to have, at the time, some administration officials voicing support for one origins theory over another, like Dr. Fauci did at a couple, in a couple instances, he said, you know, my belief is that it's most likely uh, natural transmission. Um, Dr. Collins at one point sent an email to Dr. Fauci that was discussing um, the lab leak theory as a, a conspiracy theory. So given where we're at now, looking backward and with respect to how we talk about these things, if it ever happens in the future, is it is it prudent to have members within the administration voicing support for one theory over another if there isn't a consensus of that. So I, I do want to speak to Dr. Fauci because uh, the political attacks on someone like Dr. Fauci who uh, and, and public officials more broadly, but Dr. Fauci who has spent his career saving lives. So I just want to call out the political attacks. I think, again, it's not been helpful. Dr. Fauci himself has said he agrees with the president uh, that we needed to get to the bottom of this. To he wasn't, sorry, just one more point of clarification. He wasn't asked specifically about the lethal aid. He was asked if China will side with Russia or not. And he said there's no evidence of that, but they're providing non-lethal aid as one example. The Chinese have decisions they have to make for themselves. We want them to make the decision that so many other nations around the world have made, which is to not make it any easier in any realm, whether that's economic or military, make it any easier for Mr. Putin to continue to kill Ukrainians. And, you, and, and again, we don't believe that it's in the Chinese best interest, and this is his point, to, to move in that direction. On Friday, um, the president was asked if he was worried that China will side with Russia in the war, and he said that there is no evidence of that so far. So does President Biden believe China is neutral in the conflict? I, I can't really improve upon how the president characterized it. The, the, we have not seen China go all in with respect to supporting Russia. So it takes them going all in? For, uh, is that the bar for partnering? They have not gone all in in supporting Russia. They abstained from the vote in the UN. They, while they have not condemned the invasion that Mr. Putin perpetrated now on the Ukrainian people, uh, nor have they made a decision to provide lethal military assistance to Ukraine. And as the president said, he doesn't believe it's in China's interest to do that, that they, that they should not want. The president said that he wants cooperation with China, not conflict. <clears throat> but does the U.S. believe that China is pursuing policies, for example, the spy balloon, that make conflict more likely? One of the things that concerned us about, um, uh, about that whole episode, aside from the fact that it was clearly designed to spy uh, from a high altitude uh, over potentially sensitive military sites is that the lines of communication weren't as open, particularly on the military side, as they need to be. So the president maintains that his goal in the relationship is competition, not conflict. That has not changed, even in the wake of that spy balloon uh, event. But one of the things that really does need to we need to move forward on is opening up lines of communication, particularly on the military to military lane. And as you know, those were shut down by the Chinese after Speaker Pelosi, then Speaker Pelosi went to Taiwan. Also, do you think that there's, um, what would happen if China were to send lethal weapons to Ukraine? How would that affect the bilateral relationship? You know, I'm, again, I'm not gonna get into a hypothetical here and, and, and speculate. We have not seen the Chinese make a decision to move in that direction. We have been very honest and candid not only with all of you publicly, but with the Chinese privately, about our concerns over the provision of those kinds of capabilities. Um, and you heard, uh, you heard um, Jake Sullivan talk about this yesterday in terms of the fact that there would have to be 